make sure you sleep at least 8 to 10 hours a day. All this sounds like your mother talking, right? But, yeah, yeah, it does. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly is heart palpitation? When we talk about palpitations, and you go and search the definitions, actually it's a sensory symptom. I mean, it's something that you feel, but uh, the definition says it's basically feelings of either having a very fast beating heart rate, a sensation of a pounding heartbeat, or some fluttering in the chest, or even in the neck. It's feeling of an extra heartbeat even. They can mm. actually occur whether you are active or at rest mm. even. I guess the next question that comes automatically to mind is how prevalent it is in the, in the population. Mm. Depending on what studies you look at, there, there are some studies that say that palpitation is fairly common complaint. They did a study of people presenting to emergency department or their primary mm. physician, and on average, about 15% of such people presenting there complains to their doctor of having some palpitation. What is the commonest uh, causes of these palpitations? Up to 40 over percent of these palpitations have some cardiac origin. Mm. 30 over percent is due to psychiatric origin. 10% is they label as miscellaneous. So miscellaneous mm. means things like other medical condition like thyroid hormone imbalance, mm. maybe lack of blood, like what mm. you call anemia due to certain medication that you may have consumed, or even due to normal things that you eat on a regular basis, maybe like you consume caffeine, coffee for example. Ah, okay. When do you mm. need to worry about your symptoms? Generally, like I said, majority of palpitations tend to be benign. When do you start worrying? When your palpitation gives you chest discomfort or chest pain. Mm. When it makes you faint, that's not normal. Mm. When it makes you breathless when your heart is racing or having the extra beat, mm. when it makes you lightheaded or giddy, and when mm. it occurs very often. So heart palpitation might be misdiagnosed as panic disorder. Can it can be yes? I, I ever had patients that was diagnosed this way before. Then how do we usually differentiate between panic disorder versus? Heart palpitation. Right. So the first thing, of course, is not to dismiss all palpitations as uh, psychological causes. And I think there's a certain problem with that because it's very easily dismissed. It will take away the possible causes of cardiovascular reasons versus like psych psychological reasons. Yeah. So we should not dismiss such complaints as uh, psychiatric in origin until we have properly mm. investigated. Then okay. only after you have finished investigating, then you can get your colleagues in psychiatry to help to see whether there's any other things you missed. How does a doctor um, usually diagnose heart palpitations? History taking is actually very critical in this aspect because mm. uh, in the history taking, there are a lot of things that we look out for that provides a clue regarding the etiology, I mean, the cause of the palpitations. So, for example, a patient who described the palpitations as very brief, uh, flip flopping, maybe irregular sensation, mm. or just an extra heartbeat here and there. Mm. In the history, you also ask for things like, I told you the red flags thing, like breathlessness, mm. chest pain, 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 dizziness. But you also right. need to ask them for drug history because uh, certain medication can uh, precipitate uh, palpitation. Mm. For example, commonly encountered medicine is your decongestant for the nose. Other than all those things that I mentioned from the history, you do an ECG. In fact, it's recommended that all patients that complain of palpitation should at least get one ECG then. Because the ECG gives a lot of clues. And it's not invasive. What is an ECG? It's an electrocardiogram. What happens is, a technician will put some sticker on your chest wall and some on your arm and leg, hook you up to a machine and then press print. And then a piece of paper will come out showing the electrical rhythm of the heart. It helps us look at a few things. You know, it can tell us whether you have prior heart attack before, whether your heart structure is normal, the Apple Watch 4 onwards actually recognized by FDA, which is a US medical device. Yeah, yeah. It's a class 2 medical device. So you actually can uh, monitor your ECG for a 30 second run, if I'm not wrong. Mm. It also can sense when your heart rate has suddenly dropped or suddenly increased. And then after it alert you, and then it starts recording. So it's quite interesting. So yeah, you can yeah. ask the patient whether they have uh, those smart watches that they wear. And then mm. if they have, you can ask them when you have palpitation, you remember what your smart watch was reading at that time, what's the heart rate. Because the heart rate can also offer a clue. Mm. In so what possible palpitation it is. Uh. So what are the treatment options for heart palpitations? How do you decide like, which treatment option to choose from for your patient? Generally, I guess there will be three broad categories. Right? The first one will be patients with real abnormal findings on your investigations. <laughs> the next category will be those that you completely find nothing. So they're not exactly no symptoms. Investigation normal, you're not going to go an hour round investigation. So what do you do with this group of patients? So sometimes I give them uh, what we call a lifestyle modification. Basically things like if you're smoking, avoid smoking because nicotine and all the other 400 over chemicals in cigarette smokes. It isn't exactly healthy for your heart arteries also. It can cause a Next, adequate 
adequate rest. Make sure you sleep at least eight to ten hours a day. All this sounds like your mother talking, right? But, yeah, yeah, it does. It makes sense. Next will be avoid excessive alcohol. So for a man, that's about two standard drinks a day. For a woman, it's one. What's the standard drink, right? So basically, one can of beer, about 330 mils. Half a glass of wine, in case you ask, mm. is about 100 mils. Or a shot of spirit, <laughs> about 30 mils. I mm. must tell you how many mils, right? Because some people's glass are this big. <laughs> Next, mm. reduce stress. Lah. But that's easier said than done. I mean, work, yeah. home, kids. So you can try relaxation techniques right? and meditation, yoga, deep breathing. And then mm. last but not least, things like avoid stimulants. Lah. Stimulants in your normal diet like caffeine-related mm. products. The last one is, you found something is, mm. isn't exactly worth treating. It's enough to cause the palpitation but don't really need more aggressive intervention but it's giving them symptoms. Mm. So this group of patients, we can give you medications like beta blocker. Beta blocker is a class of drugs. It actually slows down your heart rate. Things like uh, bisoprolol, for example. Or you can even give calcium some channel blockers like Rapamil, for example. Is there like any invasive treatment? So invasive treatment, of course, is the last line. Uh, yeah. That's usually after you have detected something and it's uh, something that needs to be treated. If not, mm. it will recur and cause more complications. Examples uh, like maybe SVT, for example, supraventricular tachycardia. And then you can go for things like what we call radio frequency ablation. So it's a lot of jargon. It just means that you enter the heart via a blood vessel usually mm. using special device you look at the heart chamber certain areas are mm. ident- identified as the cause of this uh, arrhythmia and then you burn it off radio frequency ablation uh, use radio mm. waves to burn it off uh. so that one success rate for radio frequency ablation for things like let's say SVT like AV NRT so a lot of jargon it's uh. <laughs> close to 95% quite good on the first mm. try yeah and if let's say they come back for during review is hey dog it happened again then you can go in for a second procedure and that mm. usually brings a success rate close to 99% mm-hmm.